Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the new Viral on Packet service. This is the ability to run a viral server in the cloud using the Packet.net platform. The method covered in this tutorial will enable you to run the Viral on Packet service without the need to have a viral server installed locally on your laptop or ESXi workstation. You will need a Git client, VirtualBox or App Catalyst, HashiCorp Vagrant, a valid license key and a Packet.net API key. You're going to install a Git client of choice because we will be pulling in from a Git repo, as well as either Oracle's VirtualBox or VMware's App Catalyst. We're then going to be installing Vagrant from HashiCorp, appropriate for your operating system, and the appropriate plugin, either for VirtualBox or for VMware App Catalyst. Both of these are available free of charge. We're then going to be cloning from the repo, which will pull down the launcher application. We're then adding our viral key and our packet.net API key. We're then going to use the command vagrant up. This will then download the viral box cutter launcher application. Once the VM is downloaded, we're then using Terraform calls to talk to the packet.net API gateway. This in turn provisions a new bare metal server on packet.net for us. Further Terraform calls then go through the process of installing the full viral software suite onto that new bare metal server. Once completed, we receive an OpenVPN client file, which is then downloaded to our box cutter. From there, we can then SSH directly into our new viral server on packet.net. Or we can download the OpenVPN client connection and start an OpenVPN tunnel directly from our workstation or laptop into our viral server, which is now running. And when we're finished, more Terraform calls are used to then tear the viral server down. The viral server will be running on the packet.net bare metal hosting platform. Packet.net offer a range of different servers, each with their associated charge. This is an hourly charging fee, and this is in addition to the money you've already paid in order to obtain your viral license key. You must register with Packet.net in order to use the platform. Using the URL shown on the screen here, you're able to sign up and obtain a $25 credit, which will go against the charges you incur as you use the platform. As part of the registration process, you will need to associate a credit card or PayPal account with your registration, and you'll also then obtain an API key, which we'll then be using later on during the installation instructions. So let's get started. I'll bring up my browser, and first of all, we need to install VirtualBox. So VirtualBox is available for a range of different platforms, and you can pick the appropriate version that you need from here. Mac users can, if they prefer, use the VMware App Catalyst platform. This is available free of charge from the VMware site. You also need to install Vagrant. So this is available from vagrantup.com. So this is part of HashiCorp. And again, you need to install the appropriate version for your platform. Note that there's Mac, Windows, and Linux, but Windows users, you must pay attention, you must not install a 1.8.x version. You need to install 1.7.4. Once you've installed VirtualBox and Vagrant, you need to update the Vagrant plugins. So you can do this using the command Vagrant plugin install VirtualBox. This will then download the latest driver for the VirtualBox platform. Similarly, for App Catalyst, it's Vagrant plugin install VMware underscore App Catalyst. I'm now going to use a Git client to pull in the viral box cutter uh, from the Git repo. So we're going to clone from the repo. And there's the URL that you're going to clone from. That's then going to pull in all of the appropriate pieces of information and put that into my directory. So there it goes, and that's done. So now we can close our client.
So I'm using PowerShell now to go into the directory. So navigating down through the directory tree into the Viralbox cutter directory. So here we can see all the files that we pulled in from Git, including a copy of the readme file. Next, we're going into the salt directory. So I need to take my viral license key. So that's the xyz.viral.info.pem and I'm pasting the content into a file which I'm going to now save and call that minion.pem. There it is, minion.pem. No txt extension. So that's then saved and in place. So next, we're going to take the id.conf.orig file and make a copy of that called id.conf. And I'm now going to use Notepad to edit that file. So navigate to the file. There it is, open that up. And here I've got to check my domain. So it's going to be either viral or viral30.info. And the ID is they're going to be the beginning part of my license key. So XYZ, uh, whatever it may be for you. And save that file. So next, we're going to make a copy of the settings.tf.orig and call it settings.tf. Open that up in Notepad. And here I'm going to take my packet.net API key and paste that into the file. Now, two other areas to look at here. I can also alter my server type, so either bare metal one or bare metal three. And there's also the dead man's timer. So this is the time at which the system will automatically shut down. So at the moment it's set to a default of four hours. If you want, you can change that. Bear in mind, if your server is active at the four hour mark, the server will be torn down, all the contents will be lost. So you do need to pay attention to the deadmines timer. There's more information in the readme about the operation of this. So with everything in place, we're now ready to vagrant up. So that's the command you're gonna type that launches the vagrant a system, it's going to pull down the viral box cutter virtual machine image and will then run through what's known as a provisioning script, basically a set of instructions that execute inside that virtual machine. So this will take a little while to complete. So the box cutter is now up and running and we need to try to attach. So we use the command vagrant SSH. Now, because this is Windows and it doesn't have a native SSH client, we get this message giving us the information as to how to connect to the box cutter. So I'm going to use PuTTY in order to be able to connect. So going into PuTTY and we need to pay attention to that private key field there. So in PuTTY, there is a section where you can pop in the private key. So we have to navigate to that location. And although it looks empty, we just need to drop that menu and there it is, private key. So we pop that in. So that's part of the SSH auth functions. And now we need the target IP address. So 127.0.0.1 port 2222. And we're gonna log in as user vagrant with password vagrant. So now I'm connected to my box cutter and I'm gonna go into the viral underscore packet directory. and a quick view of the contents. I would encourage you to take a look at the disclaimer.txt that has information about security, also the operation of the dead man's timer, support contacts, etc. There's also the passwords file. Now you can edit this to suit your own needs. Do pay attention to uh, things like the need to stick to alphanumeric characters, also in some cases the maximum password length. Now you can also edit the settings.tf file. So if you want to change the dead man's timer, this is where you would do it. Terraform.plan is showing that the file checks out. If there were any errors, this would fail. You would not be seeing this out output. They would uh, be pointing at syntax errors. So this is what you would expect to see, hopefully. And then it's terraform apply dot to start the actual provisioning cycle. When the cycle completes, you'll see output like this, which provides all of the access details to reach your viral server on the packet platform.
You'll also find there's now a client.ovpn file. So we can use this in a moment to connect using OpenVPN to our server in the cloud. Remember the server is secured, so your only method to access our SSH from here or using OpenVPN. So I'm gonna copy the contents of my OpenVPN file and I've got an OpenVPN client already installed. So for this particular client, we need to pop into the config directory and there's already an example file present and I'm gonna edit this file and replace the contents with that set of data that I just copied out from my system. So pop the new pieces of information in, that's it. Save that file. So next I want to try and ping my server. Just make sure it's alive because it does reboot at the end of the provisioning cycle. So we use the command terraform show to see the output that we saw previously. There's my target IP address. And we're gonna try and ping. And there we go, so we're getting response. Next, I'm going to SSH in. So either as root or as viral. And we're gonna just quickly take a look at the output of one of the OpenStack commands. So switch over to viral and then Nova service list. And there we can see all of the services are up. So next, we're going to bring up my OpenVPN tunnel. So I'm starting up my GUI. And from this little option on the menu bar, I'm now going to connect. Now we can see the stream of messages going through. And if we wait a moment, we should get confirmation. Yep, there we are. We are now connected to my server in the cloud. Now I actually want to talk to my server. So the server is going to be sitting at 172.16.11.254. And if we log in, again, I'm going to need my username and password from the output of the Terraform show command. So there we can see if I want to go in as guest, there's my password there. So I'll just copy that and I'm going to log in as guest. Just as if it was sitting there locally, either on your laptop or a local ESXi server. But this is now sitting out in the cloud. So there we can see it's a 32 gig system. Next I want to grab some topology files. So I'm going to add a repository. So I'm going to pull in a set of viral files from the Git repo. And there they are, they're added to my system. So I'm going to select one of these topologies and just navigate through the tree. And I'm actually going to do launch with options because I'm going to make a modification to this. So I'm gonna select the editor, and that's gonna load my file. And there it is. But now I'm gonna add an extra node. So I'm gonna add an XRV node into this environment, connect it up. There it is. And now I'm gonna run that through Auto NetKit to build the configuration for that new node. If I click on the node, there we can see that configuration's been built. So that's ready to launch. So we press the sync button, flip back to UWM. Oops, need to give it a name. So let's just call it packet and launch. So the simulation's now coming up. We can see our list of nodes there. And as those virtual machines come up, we'll see them transition. We can also see external connectivity information there. Now, because we're directly connected using the OpenVPN tunnel, I can then take a client like Putty, put it into Telnet mode, and use it to connect to my virtual machines that I'm up and running on my server on the packet platform. So it's 172.16.11.254, and that port number that we saw, so it's 17.002, and connect. 
So this is straight from my laptop over the OpenVPN tunnel into a virtual machine that's running in the cloud. You can see you know, routing table, OSPF is just going active on that node. And there we can see our prefixes are being loaded. Now I can also use the console connection options that are available in the UWM interface like this. So rather than using a Telnet client like Putty, I'm actually using a web-based Telnet client. And it's exactly the same kind of capability. And again, we can just see that we're connected in, you know, routes are all being exchanged. Now from the UWM interface, I can use download original viral file to save my topology because I'm done with my system. So I'm going to issue the command to bring the system down and that is terraform destroy space dot. Now you may need to issue this command a couple of times because sometimes it gets uh, uh, forgetful, forgets to bring servers down. But so you should see an output that looks a little like this. If you see messages about active servers, just issue the command a few more times. It should then clear. Good practice though, go on to uh, app.packet.net and just make sure that there are no active servers being shown on the output of the screen. So we're finished with the box cutter. So we can bring that down and that's the command vagrant halt. And this is effectively suspending the box cutter virtual machine. And we'll see a message in a moment. That's it, we're done. So if I want to start up again, so the next time I want to use uh, my system in the cloud, it's just vagrant up. This will take a moment to spin back up again. So the box cutter is back up again, and one more time, Vagrant SSH to get our access coordinates and also the location of our private key. And again, we can then use PuTTY, setting up to use the private key. Again, under the auth option, point to the private key. And then setting up our connections, so 127.0.0.1, port 2222, username Vagrant, password Vagrant. And we will be back into our box cutter and we're ready to go once more. So again, we can go into the viral packet, modify our settings, select a different type of server, change the dead timer, again, run the Terraform plan file. And when we're ready, Terraform apply dot.